Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we are going to be talking about HDR photography and we got started with this question from Eugene. Eugene said, I've seen some images called HDR images. Would you mind doing an episode about HDR images and tell me how to create one? Well, Eugene, that is a great question, and HDR photography is really a broad topic. And so in this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it really simple. And so you have the tools that you need to get out there and get started and make some HDR photos. And so I'm going to intentionally skip over some details that we might cover in future episodes, because if I covered all that, this video would be a couple hours long, and we just don't have enough time for that. So let's talk about first what an HDR photo is. And what happened in episode 41, I talked about dynamic range and how that had affected our cameras. And the sad thing is on most digital cameras, our cameras can't capture all of the uh, luminance values, all the bright areas and all of the dark areas. And so some things are either washed out or underexposed and you can't see everything that our eyes can see. And so that's where HDR photography comes in. And so what happens is we'll shoot a series of photos, some that are overexposed and some that are underexposed, and then one that's exposed correctly. And then we smoosh all those together in some post-production software, most notably Photoshop works for this. And then what we are able to do is we can take these underexposed photos and yank out all the really bright values and so we can capture those, they're not blown out. And then we take the really bright overexposed photos and we take the really dark values, and so those aren't underexposed, we can yank those together and smoosh it all together using a technique called tone mapping. And then we get this photo that sometimes looks um, supernatural because we can see this really broad range of uh, tonal values. It's really, really cool. Now, one of the things that happens, and technically what you're creating initially is called an HDRI image, high dynamic range image. And technically speaking, it's a 32-bit image. And one of the problems is you can't actually see all the tonal values on your screen from an HDRI image. And so what you'll have to do is you have to convert that into something called an LDR image, low dynamic range image, so that you can see everything and print it and share it. And so we're going to show you how to do all of this stuff. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but it's not. It really can be broken down into four steps. And here's what those four steps are. There are four steps to this process. The first step is to shoot your images. Now you'll need to shoot one shot at the proper exposure, and then at the very least, you'll need to underexpose one shot and overexpose another shot. This is called bracketing. The second step is to merge those images. Now you can use several different software applications. We're going to be using Photoshop and Bridge to do the work for us, and specifically, we're gonna be using HDR Pro that's built into Photoshop CS5. Now, in the second step, you do have the option in Photoshop to save what is called an HDRI image, a high dynamic range image. Step three is to do your tone mapping. This is where you'll tell your software how to apply the highlights and the shadows and what things you want to be brought out and what things you want to diminish. Step four is to convert that HDRI image to an LDR image, which is a low dynamic range image. And then finally, in this step, you'll save your image so you can share it with friends or post it to your portfolio or put it out there on the web. All right, well, step one is to shoot a bunch of images and making sure that we're bracket so we get some that are overexposed and some that are underexposed. And I know just down the street at the park, they're irrigating right now. And so I think this would make a great shot uh, for our HDR image. So let's get out of here and go take those shots. Well, I'm here at the park. I want to shoot a high dynamic range image. And at first we thought, oh no, it's all flooded because they're doing irrigation. But then I discovered that there's all kinds of detail in this water here. There's this dry grass, there's all kinds of shadows. This tree has great shape. It's actually a perfect illustration of when an HDR image is uh, what you need because there's no way I could get an exposure that shows the sky, the tree, and all the details of this water just by shooting one shot. So I'm gonna take a few shots of this then we'll go back to the studio, I'll throw it on my computer, and I'll show you how to convert from this to an HDR image. Great, now I'm bracketing by changing my shutter speed. One stop over, two stops over, three stops over, one stop under, two stops under, three stops under. So I have all my images that I need, now let's go put them together. Well, now that we've finished step one, which is to shoot our image, uh, I've actually saved those to my hard drive and I've opened Bridge 
and I'm exploring these images in Bridge. So here is the shot that I like. I did several different uh, angles, and so this is the one I like. This is the properly exposed shot. Right next to it, this image is overexposed by one stop. This is by two stops and by three stops overexposed. Then I underexposed one, two, and three stops as well. So I need to take all seven of these images. So I'm going to select all seven, and I want to merge those using HDR Pro in Photoshop. So this is really easy to do in Bridge. I just go up here to Tools, go to Photoshop, merge to HDR Pro. Now when I click on that, it's going to open Photoshop and it's going to do all of that work of merging all of these images together for me. And then once we have that done, then we can either save the image as an HDRI image, which is a high dynamic range image, or we can go straight to our tone mapping. And that's the choice we're going to do. It'll make more sense a little bit later. I'll explain how you have that option to save. But for now, we're going to go straight into our tone mapping option. So I'm going to let this load in, and then we'll start working on that. Okay, through the joy of editing, everything has been loaded in and we are ready to start doing our tone mapping. Now, over here on this Merge to HDR, we have some uh, options. It, uh, by default, will come up in 32-bit. Now, this is something we're going to come back to. Right now, we don't want to work in 32-bit mode. We want to work in 16-bit mode. Now, the difference between these two, 32-bit is a true HDRI image, a high dynamic range image. 16-bit and 8-bit images are not. They're considered LDR, low dynamic range images. So what we're going to do here is by using Merge to HDR Pro and working in the 16-bit space, what we'll do is we're going to do our tone mapping and our conversion to LDR basically all in one step. So let's do that really quickly now, and then I'll show you a different way to do it, and you'll see why we broke those steps out into different components. So I'm going to click here to 16 bits. And once I do that, you'll see that I get a bunch of menu items that show up here on the right. So we're going to wait just a second, and there they go. Now you can see there's a bunch of things. So let me show you exactly what we're doing. Well, down here you can see that I have all of my different images selected. So plus 3, plus 2, uh, I'm sorry, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, even, plus uh, 1, plus 2, plus 3. So all the images I showed you before are being used. You can select and deselect these if you need to. I want to keep all of these. Now right now, this image looks pretty cool. There's some things I want to show you though. The first thing is called Remove Ghost. So I'm going to zoom in here to 200%. Then I'm going to go right up here to the top of this tree here. Now if you look closely, this tree has some blur that's not really distinct. The reason for that is the wind was blowing and as I shot these different images, well, they, the leaves weren't in the same place and so we have what are called ghosts. So Photoshop can try to remove those when you select this little checkbox. So we'll do that. It's going to take a couple of seconds here and then it'll go in and you can see that the ghosts have been removed. You can specifically see it right over here where before this was sort of a blur, now it's not. So that's a really nice feature. So I'm going to zoom this out so I can make sure I can see everything that's going on. Now once I have this done, I can start going through here and figuring out how I want the shadows and highlights and how much detail I want and where I want my gamma to be. Now this is something that would take a little while uh, to really dial in and we're trying to keep this at a very high level uh, so we can just get to it quickly. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you this edge glow um, and we'll get there by going to crank this detail up. You can see that really, uh, it's almost like an over sharpening. This instantly becomes really, really sharp. And watch what happens when I crank this up. I'll make the radius big. You can see we actually have this glow. And what it's trying to do is make a transition between uh, different levels of these images. And if you overdo this, you're really going to have a nasty looking image. And I've seen a lot of HDR images that overdo this edge glow. So I recommend you don't do that. So make your radius a little bit smaller. Maybe make that strength a little bit less, and you'll get much more realistic looking images. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to set this to about 81 pixels, and then the strength. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit to maybe around 65 or so. And so just to start with on this one, I think that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to change the gamma. And so I can, I'll show you what the gamma does. I'll just overdo this. You can see that it's almost... Uh, unworldly looking. If I lower it really low, you can see that I've got too much black and way too much white, so the contrast is too much. So I'm going to uh, put this back up to, oh, I don't know, about here. I'm just sort of eyeballing this. And uh, once I have it set right there, 
uh, that looks sort of good. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit to make that a little bit brighter. And uh, the shadows here aren't dark enough for me. So um, I'm going to take these. Actually, they're too dark. I want some detail here. So I'll bring that up just a little bit. And then I want the highlights to come down a little bit because I think that we just have too much in the highlights there. So I'll bring that down a little bit. And you can see that we can start playing with this stuff now. And it's starting to look a little bit different than what we had before. Now the other thing that we can see here is our color is sort of getting bland. So I want to increase the saturation so I can do that. It's going to get a little bit more blue. Uh, the vibrance is similar to increasing saturation. It just takes colors that aren't all saturated and it sort of can increase those. So I'm starting to get something that I really like here. And I can start playing with these sliders and getting things dialed in. And you can see that now we have uh, detail in the shadow side of these trees. Plus, we can actually see the sky. And this is what's called a high dynamic range image. Now, once I have this dialed in where I want, there are a couple other things I can do. Hidden back here, there's something called a curve. And so if you're familiar in Photoshop with levels and curves, you still have those uh, right here. So I could maybe bring something like this in, bring this up a little bit. And so we can get a little bit more of a uh, contrasty image there. And so if you're familiar with curves, this makes sense. If not, don't worry about it too much. But it's a really nice feature to be able to uh, really fine tune how these tones are mapped in your image. Now, once that's done, hit OK. And usually you would spend a little bit more time working on this than I just did. But it gives you an idea of how everything works. So this is going to create the file. It could take a little while. And once it's done, it'll load right into Photoshop. All right, now our image is into Photoshop. Now the cool thing is, now that this is in here, we can start doing all the different things that we've normally done before. We can do burns and dodges, and we can do uh, different tools like uh, getting rid of noise. There's a little error up here where I've got some um, noise on the image from a spot on the sensor somewhere. So I can actually go in and, and really fine tune how this image looks. I can do different mappings. I can convert it to black and white, anything I want. And then once that's done, I can go in here and save the file. And I'll just go in here and say Untitled HDR. That sounds good. I'll say Final Output. Good. And I'll save it. And there you have it. That's your first conversion to a low dynamic range image from an HDRI file. All right, well, before we go on, I did mention earlier that I'd show you the difference between working in 32-bit or 16 and 8 bit. Now, 32 bit is considered an HDRI image. 16 and 8 bits are not. And so, if I work in 32 bit mode, I can do, uh, I can set a white point, which is just basically one uh, setting on this, uh, on my merged HDR Pro. I can do the remove ghosts. But once I get all that done, I can say OK. And this is going to bring this into Photoshop as a 32-bit file. And there's one big advantage of doing it this way. So once this comes in, I'll show you that. All right, we have our image here. Now, we have this in our Photoshop um, application. And so I can go in here and I can say File Save. And so I'll save this as whatever I want. So I'll just say this is my 32-bit file. And I'll save it. That's going to go save that to the hard drive. Now, the cool thing is now that I've saved this, it's an HDRI image. And so I can do all of those changes I did before, but I can do those over and over again. So I can go in here and if I say Image Mode, and when I change it to 8 bits or 16 bits, watch what happens. I'll say 16 bits. And look at that. I get all my HDR toning that I had before in the other window. So I can go in and do all the different uh, adjustments that I want to do. And this way, what this allows me to do is save the initial 32-bit image. And then I can make different versions of the HDR toning and save those out as different uh, files in LDR format. And I always have the option to come back to that original HDRI image, which is 32 bits, and make some changes. And so that's one advantage of doing that. It breaks the steps of tone mapping and conversion to an LDR image into two different steps instead of doing it all in one step like we did it previously. Well, there you have it, Eugene. Thanks so much for the question. HDR photography is a blast. It's something that's really fun, and I encourage everybody to get out there and shoot some images and try these techniques for themselves. 
and see what you get. Now there are definitely other applications that you can use to create HDRI images and convert those and do all the tone mapping and everything we showed you. Besides Photoshop, there are plugins and standalone applications. And so we've posted links to those applications and there's some reviews and some other techniques and tips all at the Adorama Learning Center. And specifically, there's a guy named Jack Howard that's written a lot about HDR imaging. He has a book out, and so a lot of his stuff we've linked to as well. And so it's a resource that I highly recommend that you check out. And he's got some uh, tutorials and stuff and videos that are all at the Adorama Learning Center. So don't miss that if you really want to get into the world of HDR photography. Well, thanks again, Eugene, for the question. If you're like Eugene and you have a question about photography, please send it to me at askmark at adorama.com, and I might just use it on an upcoming episode. Well, thanks again for joining me. Happy shooting, and I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store, located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Adorama TV. I'm, whoa, that's not the right thing. <laughs> this will allow you to get started and do some shooting and really throw those into your post-production,